Hello students and welcome to Smart Cage Tutorials. In this video, we will be discussing about a new update which has come from Goa Board with regards to how the marks are distributed for class 9. Cla uh, Goa Board has uh, introduced some new subjects as well as part of the new education policy. Uh, and uh, those have are being implemented in schools right now. So, uh, how the marks will be given for those and how do those marks impact uh, your normal core subjects as well that is uh, mentioned in a new circular that has recently come out that is on the 12th of August. So, let's quickly have a look so you will get a better understanding of uh, how you need to score in different subjects and if you are failing in one or two subjects then how you can also pass in those subjects so not to worry about that so let's quickly have a look as to what this circular is all about so go board came out with this circular on 12th of august 2024 okay and it was uh, sent to all the heads of the recognized secondary schools under goa board and it uh, referred to the implementation of the National Education Policy, NEP 2020, for class 9 for the academic year 2024-25. And we'll see what are the decisions uh, taken by the board for class 9. So, first thing it mentions is that class 9 examinations will be conducted in two semesters covering 10 subjects. Now, if you are wondering which are the 10 subjects, so we will quickly have a look at which are the 10 subjects. They refer to the core subjects as 1 to 6. Your core subjects are your usual subjects, that is your three languages, which could be English, Hindi, and maybe Konkani, Marathi, French, Portuguese, whichever third language you've got. Then you've got Maths, Science, and Social Science, which includes History and Geography. This is, this is part of your core subjects, which is referred from 1 to 6, totally 6 subjects. Then you have 7 to 10, which they call as elective subjects, which you may have been made familiar with in your school. These are your interdisciplinary approach or IDA as some of you may know it as, art education, vocational education or NSQF and physical education. Now, this interdisciplinary uh, approach will include uh, with respect to environment, there's a separate textbook for that. Uh, I'm not sure if you know about them. Few of them may have already downloaded. We'll be referring to that. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a book available also on that in the market. Then you have uh, NSQF subjects, uh, which could include various things like banking, maybe something with related to uh, IT and so forth. I'm not quite familiar with what are the subjects. They are different for different for vocational education is different, and for NSQR subjects, if you are not familiar with them, you may ask your class teacher about that. And then you've got physical education and art education. So you may say we always had some art education and physical education as such. And why? You know, so what is different? So the different thing over here is it has been made into full-fledged subjects such that you devote more time to that okay it before it used to be just like maybe one or two periods in the entire week it is supposed to be uh, like your core subjects and that is why the timings have been increased so whether your school has done that or not that is entirely up to the discretion of the school but schools have increased the timings many of the schools may have made it till four o'clock and that is to accommodate these elective subjects. And these elective subjects are meant to develop your skills, okay, so in uh, these different areas. Like, for example, your uh, NSQ subjects or vocational may include theater arts. So, there will be some who will have, who are passionate about uh, acting or theater. Now, if you have one or two periods in the entire uh, week it will not do any justice so this is to bring out the other skills uh, within you develop skill developing skill is a big part of this national education policy and uh, even the assignments that you would be getting in this uh, core subjects would now be focusing on uh, improving your skills you would be getting uh, a lot of practical knowledge in this previously it used to be 
certain assignments based on certain personalities or uh, certain uh, geographical areas which you could just google and then copy it down and uh, submit it and now that thing is gone now it would be like for example uh, in a subject like geography you would be asked to go to a bank and find out how can you open a savings account and uh, how do you operate a savings account like what is a passbook and uh, what is interest rate how much interest do you get on a savings account and so forth but these are day to day skills that uh, are come in more handy in your day to day life okay and that is the focus of this national education policy so your assignments will now be more practical you could also be getting uh, to do a video maybe a 2 3 or 4 minute video wherein you would have to go maybe let's say go to the marketplace and interview the people in the market ask them what they are selling how they are selling what are the difficulties they have okay and for that you would have to approach them introduce yourself that would involve uh, remove more skills out of you that means you would uh, develop the skill of uh, uh, making sure uh, removing a video i mean uh, t- making a video shoot and also in on a small scale maybe with your phone and then also once you uh, take a video i mean you shoot a video then you would have to edit that is a big part of the video project then that would involved uh, a lot of of your time you know unlike what you did so uh, in that process you would be learning a lot more so initially it may be difficult it may also look sound difficult okay but eventually you will grow into it and these are certain uh, skills that will come in handy uh, in your day to day life later on so Uh, this uh, internal assessment also un- uh, will not be that easy for you because you're going to do it for the first time. At least most of you will be doing it for the first time. But they carry handy marks that will help you, especially if you are struggling with your theoretical part. So to score and pass, it will really help you. So we'll look into that further as to what Goa Board says about that. There's a lot of mention of that as well. So these are your subjects. Totally ten subjects. That is what Goa Board says. Six core subjects and four elective subjects. There would be a choice over here uh, in terms of your vocation or any skill of subjects. Different schools may have different subjects based on the availability of teachers or the people who can teach you those subjects. Assessment structure. So then speaks about the marks. So for non-practical subjects. which would involve all your subjects except for science uh, you would have it says external component a component by board so this external component refers to a your normal exam theoretical paper which is will be for 80 marks and there would be 20 marks which is internal now it says external component by board the reason why it says external and not internal till now it used to be internal meaning the school used to set the paper now you paper will be set by goa board it will come to your school and you would have to answer that so it will not be set by your teacher this paper will be set by someone who has been designated by the goa board to set the paper for you on your syllabus okay the correction will be done in the school but the paper will be not be set by your teacher so we can't say whether it will be easy or difficult that is relative to basically uh, what you have studied also 20 marks however is internal so this marks your teacher will give you your internal assessment uh, again those uh, assess uh, sub topics where you have to do whether you have to do a powerpoint or a video or maybe some other thing that has been given by goa board okay but uh, your teacher can choose one of that from there and give it to you and then your teacher will assess you for that so that is 20 marks and that is why it is internal in case of science it will be 70 marks external component and 30 marks internal so 70 marks will be your paper and 30 marks will be your internal assessment what is the price passing criteria it says a minimum of 33% overall is required with no separate passing 
in external component set by the board. So we, uh, the Goa board or your teachers are not going to see how, how much marks you have actually scored in your theoretical paper. Means you don't have to, uh, they will see, of course, sorry, but they will not uh, see that you have to pass separately in your theoretical paper. So you need, if you want to pass overall, you need not pass also into in your uh, theoretical paper, that paper that you will answer, which will be out of 80 marks or 70 marks. Okay. So that doesn't count now. What counts is the overall. That, that will include marks which you score in your theoretical paper. That will be out of 80 or out of 70. Plus internal assessment marks, which will be either 20 for non-practical subjects or 30 marks for uh, practical subject like science. So totally 33. So you have to get like 33 out of 100. So here it is 80 plus 20, right? This is 100. So you have to get 33 out of 100. Maybe in maths or uh, in social science or maybe in uh, your languages, which will be English, Hindi and whatever third language you have taken. And in science, you would again 33 out of 100 is what you require. But it also includes 30 marks internal assessment. So you, if you score well in your internal assessment, passing becomes easy in science. So overall you need 33% to pass in each subject. Now there are many students who participate in sports. So they would, call, uh, they would uh, not everybody who participates in sports qualifies for the sports mode. Uh, depends uh, on uh, what you um, whether you have achieved something in sports okay so there are people who achieve maybe they play for the uh, school at the state level or at the national level so those people uh, those students get certain sports marks so for sports called candidate it says to qualify for the benefit of sports merit marks sports candidate must secure at least 10 percent marks in external component of the board. So here they have an exception. That means you have to get at least 8 out of 80 or 7 out of 70 that would be in science uh, for your theoretical paper. After adding sports merit marks, the total score must be at least 33% in the subject including internal assessment. So what they say is that you should to pass with sports mark, you should at least get 8 out of 80 or 7 out of 70 in each subject. Okay, 7 out of 70 refers only to science. Then, you will only be considered pass with sports marks if you, if they, if, if you add this 8 out of 80 plus sports marks plus, uh, the internal assessment marks. Now, please note, the sports marks are not going to be added to each and every subject. I mean, let's say there are sports marks, let's say, just taking randomly, I say there are sports marks, total you get 30. Now, 30 does not mean 30 is applied to each and every subject. 30 means overall 30. Now, that 30 can be distributed among all the subjects. Now, for example, I give you an example. Like, let's say you have uh, uh, got low marks in all the subjects. Okay, now you want to pass in all the subjects. Okay, let's take for example maths and science. Only. Okay, let's say uh, maths you have got uh, eight out of eighty. Okay, uh, and science you have got seven out of seventy. Okay, now in each one of them you need 33 to pass. Okay, in maths, if you've got 8, that means you will need 25 marks more to pass. Okay, and how many marks do you get? Uh, do you have in internal assessment 20 marks only? Okay, even if you get full 20 marks in internal assessment and you add it to this 8, it becomes only 28, which means you're 5 marks short. And if you are 5 marks short and if you have got sports marks, they will add those 5 marks over there. Okay, so that is what it says. And they will add only 5 marks so that you just pass. Marks are not added to increase your overall mark. 
they just to help you to pass over. So there are five marks will be added over there. Five. But what if you get eight marks in English as well? And there also you get twenty you can maximum you can get twenty out of twenty. So twenty eight. There also five marks. So five plus five became ten. So that means if you have thirty marks for sports, remaining remains twenty, right? So in this way your marks will keep getting distributed. So this uh, compensation, you can say, or benefit is given to sports, as, so for students who participate in sports, because when you participate in sports, you have to travel, you have to go here and there. So you miss classes, you are unable to uh, dedicate sufficient time to study, and so you may end up scoring very low marks. And so government of India, and particularly state government of Goa, yeah, encourages students to participate in sports. So this is a way of them encouraging and helping students to participate, uh, who are participating in uh, sports, so that they don't hold back their sporting activity just for the case of studying. So that is why this benefit is given. But what it says over here is that you need to uh, get those uh, marks, minimum marks in each. And then remember 8 out of 80, wherever there are 80 marks, which means all core subjects except science, in internal assessment marks are only 20. And then again, if, if there are only 20 marks, there is no guarantee you will get 20. And if you are busy enough with your sports, you will hardly get time to even submit your internal assessment marks or in time or maybe even do it properly. And now you see the internal assessment uh, criteria or the uh, topics which are there have changed quite a lot. So in that case, uh, it becomes difficult. You go into the market making a video. You, you can't take somebody else's video and say it is mine. Before you could take somebody else's assignment and just below that write your name and your standard and your own number and say it is mine. It was considered okay. Now it's no longer the same. Each video is supposed to be different. Each video has to be edited as well. So you need to say, spend sufficient time. So saying that you will get 20 out of 20 is definitely that will not happen. Okay. So there you will lose marks. Not a lot of marks. Depends on what you have done as well. You have to do PowerPoint presentations as well. So you will lose ma ma marks here and there. So you can't guarantee yourself that you will get 20 out of 20. So if you get less marks, that means you will need more marks from your sports marks okay that will add to that and the more you utilize the less it becomes to be distributed because uh, mm -hmm. when you go for sports does not mean that you are lagging behind only in one subject overall your performance will be the same irrespective of the subject because you have not been able to give sufficient time for studies let's move to the second i hope the point is clear let's come off to the second point oh, under this it says sport marks will be applied if the candidate passes in each of the subjects. In other words, sports marks cannot be util utilized to pass a subject or subjects where the candidate has failed to meet the minimum requirement or else sports marks will be carried forward. So it says, let's say, as I said, let's say you total marks are 45 for sports. Okay. And this 45 marks and this sports ball do not apply for non-core subjects, which means your elective subjects, only a core from your languages to your social science. And let's say, for example, that 45 marks have already been utilized to pass you in various subjects. But in one subject, you are still falling short, including the internal assessment marks. Then in that case, the sports marks will not be applicable at all, it says. So in that case, it says the sports marks will be withdrawn and it will be carried forward. Carried forward to the next exam. So the sports marks remain so that you can utilize it in the next exam. But you cannot utilize it for the sole purpose of just passing. You have to do some put in some efforts as well. So I think the Goa board has been quite generous to help you to pass. The minimum criteria they say is just 8 out of 80. And if you can't score even that much out of an 80 marks paper, then you you should consider yourself as failed. So this is a 
Remember at the last point, I'll also stress over here at the last point, which is no condemnation or grace marks. So let's say you're falling short by like five or six marks. They cannot give you any grace marks or condemnation saying only because of five marks you are being filled low. They, whatever is, I think Cobot is quite generous in, with this regard in giving you marks and helping you to pass that they have decided not to give you any condemnation or grace marks because they feel that after give, being judged so generous, if you cannot still pass, then you should study harder. That is, that is what they mean. Okay. And focus a little bit on this. Because after all, even if you want to be a sports person, you need to have some educational background. Okay. That will help you in your day to day life. That is the whole purpose of education. Next. Compensation scheme, uh, scheme further says uh, this is for, this would be for students who are, uh, uh, not getting sports marks. So everybody does not participate in sports and everybody who participates in sports does not get sports mark. So it's only like if they have got certain achievements, then they merit those sports marks. So whether you deserve sports marks, whether you will get or not, and how many sports marks you will be avoided, uh, I mean awarded, uh, you may consult that with your uh, class teacher and also with your physical education teacher. Now, for the, those who do not get any sports marks, what about them? Students failing in one or two core subjects will be declared a pass if they score 80% marks in one or two internal assessment subjects, that is from 7 to 10, and minimum 50% marks in remaining one or two internal assessment subjects, 7 to 10. Uh, I'll give you two scenarios here to make you help you understand actually what does all this wording mean. Okay, so it says, let's say you have failed in maths only. Okay, uh, so you can pass in maths. Okay, if you have scored 80% in physical education and let's say 50% in idea. And I'm not saying that you, it means that you have to get 80% physical education and 50% in idea only. You can get 80% in maybe uh, IDA, uh, you can get 50% in physical education also, that is also there. And between any four of those elective subjects, okay. But you have to get 80% in one of the non-core subjects and you have to get 50% in the other. Now this applies if you have failed in one subject, okay. If you have failed in two subjects, okay, then what? Then if you have failed in two subjects, then you have to get 80% marks in two non-core subjects. Now, I have given example over here, 80% physical education, 80% in art education, the easiest part. And 50% in IDA and 50% in NSKF for vocational subject. So, because you have failed in two subjects, two of the non-core subjects you have to get 80% and two of the non-core subjects you have to get 50%. Then you will get you will be considered pass, even though you have failed in two core subjects. And this does not apply just to maths and science only. It applies to all the core subjects that includes your languages as well as social science as well. Okay. Now, it doesn't say anything about what about those who fail in more than two. So, well, at this point of time, I'm assuming that if you fail more than in more than two subjects, you are considered as failed then this compensation scheme which they have mentioned will not apply to those to the subjects. So if you sp fail in two subjects, then they can consider looking at the marks you have scored in the elective subjects only. Okay. Here again, I would say, now this is my understanding of what the circle is on about. You may have other queries, other questions in your mind that you may come, out, uh, uh, come up with so in that case, you can uh, email me at smartkidstutorials uh, at uh, gmail.com okay, with your queries and uh, I will try to answer them. Also under this YouTube video, in the discussion box, you can also ask your questions. So if I can, I will try my best to answer them. Okay, so you, let's move further. It says uh, school internal assessment subjects, which will be 7 to 10. 
Why does it say school internal assessment? Because these are question papers which will be set by your school, school teachers. Okay. Here the paper will not come from the board. Here your school only will set the paper. So interdisciplinary approach that is IDA, art education, vocational education and physical education. School will set question papers for all internal assessment subjects, whereas for core subjects 1 to 6, board will arrange the question papers for school. So this is what I mentioned even before. So core subjects, the papers will come from uh, outside, from Goa board, okay, set by an external teacher, which will be the same for everyone in Goa. All the schools under Goa board, they will be answering the same paper at the same time on the same date. Just like how 10 standard students answer. The only difference between 10 standard students and your, uh, your would be that your teachers will be correcting. So, equivalent I can say of uh, a prelims paper for 10th standard. In a prelims paper for 10th standard, the paper comes from the board. Same paper, same time, same day for all the students under Goa board. But the paper is corrected by your teachers. That is prelims for 10th standard. And that is the same format that will be used for 9 standard board exams as well, which is divided into two semesters. Then, your question paper pattern. Your question paper pattern, very interesting. It is 50% multiple choice questions and 50% will be subjective questions. So, if I take, for example, uh, your uh, English paper. So, 40 marks will be multiple choice questions. So, one question will be given. Under that, there will be four options. You may choose any one of them. And 50% will be subjective questions, your normal type of questions. That would be your question and answers, maybe in one line, two lines, maybe three or four lines, and some other like fill in the blanks, name the following, from where is from, match the column, where is from your subject to subject. So that is what it will be. 50% MCQ and 50% subjective questions. So also prepare for multiple choice questions. Okay, just don't study your question and answers which your teachers are giving or definition. Learn because learn how to answer multiple choice questions. The different types of questions that can come, they can confuse you. So learn them as well. Then it says assessment will be done by the respective schools and marks will be uploaded on web portal developed by the board. So what it says is that once you answer your paper, your teachers will correct them and then they have to upload those marks on a website which uh, Goa board will give your teachers and there your marks will come. So your marks will be visible to you online, okay, not in your classroom. So they will be available online. Again, so one more thing I would like to say, you have, may have already gone through an exam now, which is your, which would be, you would consider as a midterm exam. Those marks are not counted if you have that query. That just giving you, checking your preparedness for the subjects that have been taught to you so far. But those marks are not considered for internal assessment or for board exam at all. Your marks include just the paper that will be coming in October, okay, November, whenever your first semester exam is there. And the rest will be your internal assessment marks, which will include your uh, assess assignments that are given to you, which will be the video, PowerPoint, some field trips, and so forth. Okay. Marks will be available online to you. Okay. So no report cards in the school. The board aims to implement NEP 2020 in a fair and transparent manner, ensuring a comprehensive assessment for student of students' knowledge and skill. The content of this circular should be brought to the notice of all concerned, signed by the secretary of the Goa board. So this is what the circular is all about. And I hope things, the concept that uh, that is mentioned in this uh, circular is now clear to you. And I know you may be having a lot of questions. I'm not sure if this circular has been brought to your notice by your teachers. If not, then you can probably ask your teachers about this. And if you have questions, you may also ask me about it by emailing uh, me. 
at uh, smartkidstutorials at gmail.com. You can also ask your questions below this video in the discussion uh, section, okay, uh, about any questions that you may have, okay. With respect to your assignments also, if you have any queries or if you would like me to make videos with respect to the assignments in different subjects, you may let me know. Uh, I would be happy to help you out with that. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like watching this video, please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends as well as your classmates. And uh, please do subscribe to the uh, to the channel because there will be many more videos coming up. Not just for 9th standard. I also make a lot of videos for the class 10th. Okay. This time there is a lot of focus on class 9 because of the introduction of NEP 2020. And lots of questions in the minds of students, teachers also and also parents. So I'll, I'll try and answer whatever I can to the best of my ability. So thank you once again for watching and keep watching more such video. Thank you.